to um, indicate my support uh, for Deputy Ellis uh, and the bill that he's putting forward here this morning. And in reflecting on the bill and the problem that exists, I think it's important to look at some of the numbers concerned where you have in 2013 17,855 incidents of domestic violence, uh, 11,756 incidents of emotional abuse. And the statistics roll out just like that in those sizable numbers. So we have to firstly accept the fact that there is a very serious problem and that we have to deal with it. In setting out the legislation, then, if we looked at the Istanbul Convention, has been referred to earlier on, uh, which gives a clear outline to countries as to what they should do. It gives them the definition of the violence. It gives a, a, a radical and, and a different approach to how you would approach that, define it, prosecute, assist, and indeed provide the legislation. It also provides for oversight in terms of the various countries that have signed up, uh, 25 of them to date. But on the 21st of October 2014, in an answer to a parliamentary question, uh, the Minister outlined all of the issues within her department that have to be looked at, uh, the various working groups, the work has been done to date and so on, and there seems to be no urgency about it. We haven't signed up, but we'll sign up when we look at all the different aspects of this within the department. And meanwhile, while the legislators, to a degree, sit on their hands in this House and don't deal with it, more and more women and men are being abused. More and more violence is being seen in the homes in this country. And we're not reacting quick enough to that. And that I see as a huge problem. And that is why I welcome uh, the comments in this House today and the bill that's being put forward um, by Deputy Ellis. And we need to include uh, the commentary around violence to men in the home in this. Because one of the things that austerity has brought in terms of problems to this country is, is that a higher level of violence within the family home. Men, women, and indeed the children suffer. So our response to date, Minister, and I quite frankly I'm a bit shocked at what you said, because you're someone that holds clinics, you're in a, a city constituency in, in, in Waterford, and you must see what we all see. In Kilkenny, there, are, there is in excess of 3,000 people on the housing list. This is your main housing list. You mentioned the rental accommodation scheme. You mentioned the new scheme that replaces the rent and loan scheme in terms of HAP. And you, you make it sound as if all of these are available. They're not available. The rental scheme will give rent for 540 euros, when in fact the real rent is 650 euros. It's higher in other counties and it's certainly higher in the capital, but it's not reflected at all in housing policy and it's not reflected in the local authorities. You then go on to talk about women's refuge and the different supports that are there. Well, let me tell you that you can't get in to the women's refuge in Kilkenny. You can't get the supports if you're the victim of domestic violence in Kilkenny because the supports are not there and the funding is not there. Now, any judgment of government should be in the positive in supporting those that are marginalised or that are affected in some way within our communities. This vulnerable sector of people, men, women and children, are the ones that I would prioritise. I would say that the housing section should go out of their way to assist them, not just in terms of accommodation, but in terms of the support that is required to hold a family together and to deal with the fallout of domestic violence. And that fallout can have a lifelong effect, not just on the person that has been abused, but on the young members of that family that have watched it. And in honesty, around the country, 
There is not the response that is required. You will find very little humanity or compassion in the local authority housing system that will encourage the officials to go out of their way to help a man or a woman or a family to get over this problem. And as a result of that, hotels that offer you know, reasonable rates, we'll call them, are now being used to house families like this. In fact, they're being used to house families who simply can't get and won't get housing accommodation. It is absolutely incredible that in Ireland, that apart altogether from those that sleep on our streets and can't get houses, that you have this growing problem of domestic violence that is spinning over and is at crisis point, and the only thing that we can talk about is future legislation. I would expect that the least that we should do is ensure that all of the existing refugees around the country have sufficient funds to deal with the numbers that are turning up for help. And that as it states in that European Convention, that we would be begin to provide those facilities where they are not to be found, or begin to provide more in terms of number, where in a city like Dublin, Cork or Limerick, there may be more incidents uh, of this kind, and they would need greater resources. And all we seem to talk about is the legislation, or to say to Deputy Ellis, that he's proposing an amendment to the wrong bill. I would have preferred if he came in here and said, yeah, look, we're going to propose the amendment to the correct bill. You're right, Deputy Ellis, in your description of the problem. And by the way, in the meantime, we're going to provide all of the uh, range of services, our funding, to the best of our ability, and we're going to prioritise them. I don't see anything that we do in this House that should have a greater priority than the support of those that are being treated like this in their own homes and in our communities. But it says a lot about the state when you think about it, that a foreign national whose story will be told next week and the week after, who was violently raped in this country, wasn't even recorded through the hospital or through the Garda system as being a, raped, a rape victim. And the pictures of that woman are horrific. They are horrific. You would not have to be a qualified medical practitioner to look at this woman and understand that this woman was treated violently. And no prosecution has been brought against her. Very little English, very little understanding of the law here, and the system has failed her. Now, the system has failed the many others that are still on the waiting list, are still trying to seek help. But it has failed that woman. If you examine the various complaints that were made within the Garda Shia Khan recently, one of those was about a woman <coughs> who accused a co-worker within the force of sexually assaulting her. And that case has never been dealt with. And that woman has been left abused, demeaned, and broken. And by the way, out of a job. Because that's what normally happens to people who report something like that. They themselves then become the victims of a state without compassion or humanity. That is the problem. And it is a culture and attitude problem that we have to overcome. It's not just about funding or housing. And it is a big issue for government. And I would like to see you, Minister Coffey, take it in such a way that you remove all of the politics out of it. And that you say to government, this is one issue that we recognise across the House that requires priority, funding and immediate action. And that immediate action can also be linked into how you treat people when they turn up for local authority house that have been affected by domestic violence. Because they're not treated. In fact, I tell you how they're treated. 
They're guilty when they come in. They're guilty Thank until you. they prove themselves right. Thank and you. that is not the correct attitude for any state to have to people of, that are vulnerable like this.